So then last night, the most interesting game I watched, which then led me into a pretty interesting tunnel. So I was watching Southern Illinois, Edwardsville. They beat Tennessee State last night, 67-65. It was game of the night, man, back and forth all night long. So I had the four split screens going. And because that was the better game, I ended up putting the sound on that for the most one. So, uh, you know, Southern Illinois, Edwardsville now 4-4 four four on the season, 2-0 in, in the OVC. So they've been on pause for a few weeks. Uh, and then come back, you know, that's a big win after sitting there, being on pause for a couple weeks. I think they missed about seven or eight of their last games. And now back to it. But uh, one of the kids that I was watching, just watching the game, and Shamar Wright, nice little player, ended up having 14 points, nine rebounds. And I thought, okay, Shamar's going to be on my under-the-radar player watch. Really enjoyed his performance last night. And then they started mentioning his twin, Lamar Wright, on the same team. He had five points last night, Lamar, with two rebounds and 15 minutes off the bench. And I'm like, boom, there's my story. So I started doing uh, a little bit of research on the kids last night, and then, wow, what a story they have. So Shamar, a 6'7", sophomore guard, he's averaging 7.4 points per game right now, four rebounds as well. And Lamar, a 6'7", sophomore forward, with 6.4 points per game and three rebounds a game. So Shamar, it looks to be, is the better of the two brothers. And uh, he originally committed to UNC Greensboro, coming out of high school. And then switched his commitment, I guess, when uh, Brian Barone, who's the head coach at Edwardsville, um, decided to take the two of them. And so, um, so Brian Barone, who's the head coach now, his father, Tony, was a former NBA coach. And he coached the Wright Twins' father, Lorenzen, when he was with the Memphis Grizzlies in the NBA back in 2006. So a bit of a connection there. So for those that don't know, Lorenzen was murdered in July of 2010, but before that, played in the NBA from 1996 to 2009. He played his college ball at the University of Memphis from 94 to 96. He was the seventh overall pick in the 1996 NBA draft by the Los Angeles Clippers and had a pretty good NBA career. Played with uh, the Atlanta Hawks. He had two different stints with them. Played with the Memphis Grizzlies, as I mentioned, Sacramento Kings, and the Cleveland Cavaliers as well. Uh, played 778 career games, averaged eight points a game over his career, 6.4 rebounds. His best season, probably 2000, 2001 with uh, Atlanta. He had 12.4 points per game and seven and a half rebounds. And then after his career, so July 18th, this is where it gets really interesting. July 18th, 2010, uh, Lorenzen Wright left his home in Collierville, Tennessee and was never seen alive again. So 10 days later, they found his body in a wooded area in a nearby town, you know, decomposed uh, out in that heat in the summer. And uh, turns out on the night of his disappearance, 911 received a phone call from Wright's cell phone. And while he was on the phone with the dispatcher, the, you know, the dispatcher heard gunshots. Turns out, you know, when they listened to the recording, 11 gunshots and then Lorenzen's phone becomes disconnected but the dispatcher didn't report it, didn't say anything uh, for eight days. And so obviously, you know, the police in Memphis and whatever the neighboring towns um, to trying to find out who did this. And hey, one of my favorite shows is The First 48. And The First 48, the most important, you know, length of time in order to decide if they're going to find who's the killer. And so when you go eight days without that kind of information, it puts a real sort of stumbling block in the investigation. And uh, so the 911 dispatcher finally tells her supervisor eight days later about that, and then you know they, they end up finding the body. So th the murder goes unsolved for the next seven years. So you know Shamar and Lamar Wright not knowing who took their father's life, and they were 10 years old at the time of his murder. And then in November of 2017, the gun used to kill his father was found in a lake in Walnut, Mississippi. So they connected the gun to a man named Billy R. Turner, who was a landscaper and a church deacon, if you can believe that. And he was eventually arrested on first degree murder. And so obviously, you know, during this conversation, probably talked a little bit, got himself a deal. And on December 15, 2017, Shara Wright Robertson, which is Lorenzen Wright's ex-wife and the mother of the twins, Lamar and Shamar Wright, she was arrested in California. Uh, she was driving the boys home from one of their basketball games. 
and FBI pulled them over and arrested her. So the boy's in the car when their mother is arrested. So turns out Shara attended the church that Billy Turner was a deacon at. So that's their connection. That's how they knew each other. I don't know if they had any kind of physical relationship or what. Or um, So it turns out a lot of this was motivated by Lorenzen had a $1 million insurance policy on his life. What I understand, he made $55 million over the course of his NBA career, but I don't think he had much of it left uh, by this point. Um, and so that $1 million insurance policy obviously became pretty important to Shara, and she wanted that money. And so it looks like she hired uh, Billy Turner to kill her ex-husband. And uh, yeah, so in July of 2019, Shara pled guilty to facilitation of first degree murder and she was sentenced to 30 years in prison. And so, I mean, wow. I mean, when you think of that story, I, I remember when hearing about when Lorenzen Wright was murdered, it was very upsetting. A lot of NBA players, you know, putting in money to try and, you know, for Crime Stoppers, trying to find out, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies put some money in and stuff as well, trying to find out who did it. And then it goes unsolved and it turns out the ex-wife did it. And so what a, uh, what a story and, and heartbreaking you know, life these these young boys have led, Shamar and Lamar. And so, like I said, I was just sitting watching the game and thought, hey, man, these kids, nice players. That's, that's pretty good. I want to try and keep an eye on these guys over the next little bit because, you know, Edwardsville, one of those scenes that's been on pause, haven't seen them much. And so decided to tune in, and then, wow, what a story. So, um, hey, that's something to keep an eye on. If you ever, you know, needed a reason to watch Southern Illinois, Edwardsville's basketball, there you go. You got one right now.